I love the thrill of being able to create something new. That rush. Uh, they call it the runner's high in athletics, so there's a programmer's high, and I know we can all relate to this. <clears throat> I love creating things that no one else has ever experienced and creating value to people, like being able to deliver something that actually improves people's lives. I love all of that. I love the metaphor of software development for the, our understanding and cognition of the world. If you wanted to become a doctor or a lawyer, there's a prescribed path that you can take. In fact, my nephew has asked me many times, well, what do I do to become a great software developer? And I can't answer him, you know? If he said, what do it would take to be a brain surgeon? I could, I could tell him the path to get there. But the path to get here in our career is not very clear. We've all arrived, if we were to go into it, in very different ways. And this is one of the challenges in that we're, we have so many different ways of thinking about things. So I want to stress simple standards, too, and we'll talk about those. Just because consensus is so powerful and having a common language is so powerful, and it is what you know, other professions like attorneys and you know, MDs have that we don't quite have yet in our industry. But we're a very young industry, as we know. It's very much, it feels like the Wild West to me still. And that's good. I mean, you know, it, it's a great way to sort of tame a very large yes. space. But at the same time, we got to start to bring in the cavalry and start to bring in the law and order all around us, so to speak. I was a superstar as a structured programmer. I was a great structured programmer and did a lot of stuff. And what I learned was that is not going to take me where we need to go. As, as a development community, as a, in my own personal career. In fact, it is the thing that is holding me back. So it took a very, very long time, like a decade, for me teaching OO to really get OO. You know, every single year I would come back and go, oh, now I understand it's so much better. It's so much better than last year. And then the following year it would be the same thing. And um, it really wasn't until I started to understand patterns and understand how the interaction of objects, the interaction of entities can create behavior rather than logic can create behavior, that really I started to see a new way of building software that wasn't a new way at all, it was oh, oh. So I'll be talking a lot about, you know, finding the joints in the chicken. And what I really mean is finding the true nature of the problem. And I think that's so important as developers because that's really the critical skill, is being able to penetrate into the essence of a problem. Once we understand the problem, very often the solution just falls out, and the rest is just typing. So really, what we're going to be focusing on, and I don't know many classes that do this, or even many books, um, is really look at how do we solve problems? What are the nature of problems, and how do we approach them in a, in a, in a way that gives us traction? Here's our objectives. And I, there's a lot of different objectives. I really want to talk about how we build software incrementally because now with agility, we are sort of required to do that. Um, so we don't get all of our requirements up front. We have to build based on just little or even no knowledge about what we need to build. And, and slowly it trickles in what exactly needs to be built. And building software in that way is a little different than the traditional waterfall approach. And it turns out, though, it's amazingly efficient if we build software incrementally with just a few things that we pay attention to. Uh, it's kind of shocking, so it can be very valuable. Um, we'll talk a lot about OO and code quality. I'm a big believer in code quality. We'll talk about key principles uh, and practices that help us write better, more extendable software. We'll look at pathologies of poor code and how we can improve it so that you know, we can sort of get our our spider sense, you know, tuned in, honed in on, you know, oh, yeah, I've seen this, this little problem before and I know how to fix it. Um, yes, in fact, Martin Fowler uses that term, code smell. And a code smell is actually a little less extreme than a pathology. A pathology says something is definitely wrong. A code smell says it could be wrong, it might not be wrong, it's something that indicates that something might be wrong. Uh, there's a, as you know, in software development, a lot of gray area. It's, we, we get to master the gray, so to speak, in software development. And so, um, but being tuned into those smells helps us identify maybe there's something missing in our design or something along those lines. We'll talk about how do we write extendable code that does not break our clients, which gives us the freedom 
to be able to refactor our code without having any dependencies on us. It's actually a very, very powerful technique. We'll talk about patterns and how to use them, and we'll see patterns in the context of what is good software. We'll look at how we can find patterns and problems, and that's really key because just knowing patterns are out there is a little, it's nice, it's academic, but how do we actually then apply it to real world problems? So we'll spend a lot of time looking at that, and we'll look at how do we find patterns just in time. You know, a lot of people think that this book, since it was written, you know, and released back in like 94, that is kind of irrelevant today because, well, gee, everything changes in software so fast. But I think that um, patterns themselves are actually more relevant today in, in an agile environment than they were in a traditional environment. And I see so many more opportunities to apply patterns as I build software incrementally and see requirements unfold rather than trying to figure it all out up front. So I think they really complement themselves a lot. They're probably a bad thing.